A year of research and input from some 5,000 community members comes together in a newly unveiled Omaha Public Library plan for the next 20 years. Okay, ETV News Watch 7's Joey Savchik joins us live to tell us about the recommendations and how they might change over the next two decades. Joey. Rob Julie, the in-depth recommendation is funded by Heritage Omaha. It looks two decades into the future. We pointed out that 20 years ago, you couldn't predict the demand for podcast rooms in libraries or the explosion of e-reading. So we wanted to know why it's worthwhile to invest in a plan that takes us all the way to 2043. Omaha Public Library hopes their next chapter is a long one. They're storyboarding for the next 20 years. This is a guide. These are recommendations. Good plans are always equal parts practical and aspirational. A plan funded by Heritage Omaha and presented by Mayor Jean Stothert recommends changes big and small to nearly every library branch in the city. I've always thought that the library is one of the crown jewels of the city of Omaha. Here are some highlights. Expansions at Elkhorn, Sorensen, Willa Cather, and Washington. Increased meeting and family play spaces at Swanson and Millard. Reinforcing relationships with city community centers at Florence and Saddlebrook. Another genius of this plan is that um, it has embedded flexibility at every decision. The price tag would be 215 million if all the recommendations are implemented. But the mayor emphasizes it's a fluid plan subject to change with the times. Budgets are all about the mayor's priorities. And that's the way that they have always been. The recommended OPL budget for 2024 is expected to increase 8.3% to staff eight new employees. We're not going to go out there and either redo or remodel or build new libraries if we can't afford to staff them. The library says they'll be an open book over the years and will read into community feedback. The community also requested more outdoor spaces, even for food trucks. The Board of Trustees will consider the resolution to endorse this plan at their meeting on June 21st. Rob, Julie. All right, Joey, thanks. Happening in Iowa tonight, a former city clerk could be looking at criminal charges. This follows a lengthy investigation from the state auditor. Bill Shamert's on the live desk with that. Bill. Rob, we're talking about Cumberland, Iowa. It's a town of about 250 people in Cass County, and the state auditor tells me a former clerk either mishandled it or embezzled nearly $100,000. The person accused is Grace Thompson. The audit covers January 2014 to June 2021, or about seven and a half years, all of Thompson's time as the city clerk. It alleges nearly $60,000 in improper disbursements, which includes about $19,000 in authorized payroll payments to Thompson. The audit also found about 30,000 in unbilled, undeposited, or uncollected utility payments. Thompson told auditors she didn't pay her own utility bill at all while she was city clerk. There was also another 3,300 in unsupported disbursements, meaning no receipts or documentation for reimbursements to Thompson and other city employees. The agonizing part about this for these towns it's the loss of the money, but it's also the breaking of trust. Uh, these are folks in, in small towns like Cumberland who know most of the people that they work with. They know most of the people who are paying those tax dollars. I talked with the Cass County Attorney's Office today. No charges have been filed yet, but they are investigating. I'm told it shouldn't take long. Back to you. Okay, Bill, keep us posted. And now to a developing story. Sarpy County deputies arrest a Columbus man for alleged sex crimes on a child. 28-year-old Dustin Podal is facing two counts of first-degree sexual assault of a child. A criminal complaint says the crimes happened during August and December of 2022, and then again in January of this year. The victim is under the age of 16.